We won. Congratulations. No, congratulations to us. Looking to repair a road or improve a park? A city program doles out the dollars based on your vote. At the core of it, it's really giving people the power to decide how to spend a portion of the city's budget. Some haunted houses give you a scare. Then there's the Georgetown Moor. <laughs> it's not for the timid. Come down to the moor. We're waiting for you. <laughs> Glad you made it out alive. <laughs> the haunting continues as brave souls explore the city's dark side. I like scary stuff, and so it was kind of interesting. These stories and more coming up next on City Stream. Hello, I'm Dennis Bounds, and welcome to the Halloween edition of City Stream from Pioneer Square. We are in the heart of Seattle's original neighborhood, established back in 1852. It's filled with fine restaurants, vibrant shops, galleries, and apparently, restless spirits. More on that in a moment. Each year at this time, people crave it. Their fondness for fear has them lining up, enticed by the terror inside the Georgetown morgue. Whether it's the elaborate costumes, the extravagant makeup, or the creepy surprises, some say it's like living a nightmare. Terrifying? You bet. But this haunt also has heart. I see a lot of clowns. I heard there's clowns here and I hear chainsaws, so that's kind of what I'm expecting to see. Um, I'm not really sure. I think we're just really excited that it's Halloween. Jump scares <laughs> and uh, people chasing you. They all heard of the horrors inside, but still, they come and enter the Georgetown morgue. Welcome to the morgue. Proceed through this corridor. We're a high scare, kind of a low gore haunt, but there is some gore here just to keep the, you know, the Halloween people happy. But uh, we want to get you as many times as we can. Scott Coley's masterful design leaves people terrified. As far as what you see when you come in is we've got themed areas of the show. The first part of the haunt is a morgue theme. Kind of the industrial area of the haunt. A couple of spots we've got with a bunch of barrels. Don't really know what to expect. This is kind of a fun spot. Hey! Hey! So in between the scenes, we try to have spots where we can scare you as well. You've kind of already been out of the scene, already seen the scare, and you think you're okay until the next area, but we still try to get you there as well. If you're coming through, you don't expect anything, and then there's a scare! Yeah! My name is Stara, and I'm the casting and costume director at the Georgetown Moore Haunted House. I also run makeup. This year with my costumes, I've kind of gone for a 1940s look. So like I'm like an orderly. I also have people downstairs who are also orderlies in the Georgetown Morgue area. I've also delved into sewer people and voodoo people towards the end. I get a lot of inspiration from older movies, especially comedies and kind of dark vintage movies as well. Hello. All right. So. Georgetown Mort is legendary for its elaborate makeup, transforming ordinary men into monsters. I am a patient in the morgue, I guess you could say. People walk by and I get up and just scare the heck out of them. Uh, she is a voodoo banshee priestess kind of ghoul thing. My character in the haunt is, I don't know, kind of a zombie thing. These performers go all out, terrifying guests even before they enter. How do you think she'd walk with only one foot? <laughs> Would she hop it around? I'll let them know you're coming, Carol. Yeah! Oh, here we go! Carol's coming! I love being at the Haunted House. I love working here. It's definitely some creative niche that started as something fun and it's taken off into my career. I like working with haunters and I like working in the Haunted House industry. Something drew Scara to Scott Coling's Haunted House long before she worked here. 
I actually used to go to Scott Cohen's haunted houses when I was a child. Well, me and my cousins, it was what we would do. The only time we'd get along is we'd go to Scott Cohen's haunted houses. Scott developed a passion for haunting early on. My dad had done haunted attractions, and so I had gone through quite a few of his as a youngster. So we used a lot of their different ideas and designs from what had scared me as a kid. Cohen's first haunted house was a hit. From that point on, he knew the dark attraction industry was for him. He haunted various cities, taking over the Cube 93 house in 2002. Six years later, that house moved, becoming the Georgetown Morgue. And we had been in the South Center Mall parking lot in a tent, and so our dream really was just to get a building here in Seattle. We wanted to be in the Seattle area where we were close to. And the Georgetown Morgue has been terrifying the people of the region ever since. While many of the demons ooze blood, the bloodletting extends to the guests all too willingly. The last three years we've been working with Bloodworks, which is awesome. I've been trying to work with a blood group for a while and finally got one that's behind us here. Pump three times and hold for me. The idea is that the Georgetown morgue is so popular that the line gets very long. It's about two hours long. So rather than waiting in the line and doing nothing, if you and your friends want to save some lives, all we need is one donor. We'll upgrade you with four VIP passes to skip the line entirely. Why not come in, give blood, have a cookie, save some lives? It's a great thing you're giving blood, you're giving back, and, and we'll give back by putting you right into the door. I believe a lot of people like to come and get scared coming to the haunted house. It feels good when you're running and being chased. It's like a roller coaster. You don't know what's around the next corner. That kind of feeling, I think people really get a kick out of it. <laughs> they came out of the corner, they were like, whoop out. And then I was like, oh my God. And it was really scary. It was awesome. We tried to do haunted houses like this in the area. This is definitely the best experience we've had. Remember. The terror you endure in the Georgetown War does not end when you exit. It returns in your nightmares over and over and over. <laughs>The Georgetown Morgue is open select nights from now through November 3rd. For the exact dates, go to seattlehaunts.com and click on Georgetown Morgue. <laughs> Residents now have the power to fund safer streets and park improvements. How you can tap into the special resource as City Stream continues. Seattle has a $3 million fund just waiting for the city's residents to tell the city how to spend it. It's called Your Voice, Your Choice, and so far it's led to safer crosswalks in one part of town, and it's about to pay for improvements at a beloved park in Chinatown. Nicole Sanchez explains. For years, I wish that the love of my life would find me. Silly, I know since there's no one here. 15-year-old Angelina Riley is excited to be playing the role of Cinderella in this year's teen summer musical. It fits! Oh. My search is over! Cinderella, will you marry me? She's part of the program at Langston Hughes Performing Art Institute. <laughs> and while she loves coming to rehearsals, Sometimes she avoids going out for lunch because of how dangerous it has been to cross over East Yesler Way. Thank you. But that's all changed thanks to some recent safety improvements. 
It's now easier for these young people to come and go to Langston Hughes thanks to an improved crosswalk off Yesler and a new roundabout off 17th Avenue South. I think now, since they have the flags, it's better for us. Like we, like I, most of the summer, I was like, I don't really wanna go. Like, I'm not trying to get hit by a car, y'all. But um, now we can. We were trying to cross the street and these cars have no patience whatsoever. Literally, there were, because of the stoplight that's all the way down there, all the cars would be backed up. And then when it's time to go, we would be standing on both sides of the sidewalk, but they wouldn't stop for us. But now all of a sudden, these cars are stopping and we have the little flag thing so we can signal that we're in the street. So that's pretty cool and I feel safe. The project was part of the 2017 Your Voice, Your Choice program. It allows anyone 11 years old and up to vote for park and road improvements in the city. I'm so happy that they're listening to us because pretty much we are the people that live here. Your Voice, Your Choice is actually a participatory budgeting program and at the core of it, it's really giving people the power to decide how to spend a portion of the city's budget. So this is our second year as Your Voice, Your Choice Parks and Streets and we have $3 million for people to decide. The program has become so successful, more than 1,000 project ideas were submitted this year. 77 officially made the ballot, and of those, 51 were awarded. We won. Oh, congratulations. No, congratulations to us. The project that got the most votes for 2018 is here at Hinghei Park in the Chinatown International District. 564 people voted to have $90,000 worth of upgrades and repairs made here. Yeah, you'll see these foundational pieces are going to get a cosmetic lift as well. It's been incredibly well loved. So we're going to be fixing up and restoring the tiling on these benches. A major investment will be made to the pavilion. $20,000 will help repair or replace all the green benches. Another $10,000 covers improving the pavilion's stools. The kiosks will get a new roof, and new tiles will go on the art benches. There are also some major safety improvements planned here, including repairs to the uplifted paving caused by tree expansion, and handrails along the steps off South King Street to make sure this park is accessible and safe for people of all ages. A lot of the residents in this neighborhood live in really small spaces, and um, this is a lot of SROs in this neighborhood, so this park is a third place for a lot of them, especially in the summer. It's a great space to come out to to cool off from being in your hot apartment, and it's just a great place to gather. It's also one of the few green spaces that we have in this neighborhood. With the new park, you know, it kind of make the old park look even older in a way, uh, and it also opened up the space even more. It become, has become more visible. Uh, so this is a great opportunity to really bring the old park up to date. Thanks to volunteers like Rata Dan, more non-English speaking people participated in this year's voting process. Rata spent two weeks encouraging hundreds of people to vote. He even helped them find the appropriate ballot for the language they speak. This year, six times as many non-English ballots were returned. It was amazing because um, I really like the way DON did it, the Department of Neighborhood. They had it in language and this neighborhood is overlooked because we do have a language barrier and because they did have paper ballots in language, it was so much easier to facilitate um, the residents of this community to vote. Looking ahead, the city plans to continue investing in projects that matter to the community and empower more people to have their voice heard. In the last year, I have seen people who never talk to each other talk to each other. I have seen so many community members dreaming about what they would do to transform the spaces they use. If you'd like to learn more about the 50 other projects approved in this year's vote, go to seattle.gov and search for YVYC. We'll be right back.
City Stream returns from Merchant's Cafe, which claims to be Seattle's oldest restaurant, rebuilt in 1890. Over the years, strange occurrences have been reported here, including slamming doors and moving objects. The cafe's website also mentions previous employees who've reportedly seen small, shadowy figures in the basement. Some believe it may be connected to two young children killed in a fire there in 1938. We're inside the Merchant's Cafe with Michael Harris, who's a bartender born and raised in the Seattle area. This place has great historical significance in Pioneer Square. Yeah, it's super fun working here. Tons of history. It burned down and then it was rebuilt then. Yeah, so it, it burned down with everything else that was down here. Everything was made out of wood then. And so once that happened, all of the businesses were like, we're not gonna go through this again. Let's build brick buildings. And then shortly after that, the city decided it was time to raise the streets. So we had all of these buildings here that ended up having to put in second doors into the second level of their businesses. So there's a bar downstairs, which is actually the first floor. This is the second floor yes. where there was a brothel back so, in the early days. So what makes a saloon a saloon? It has to have three components. It has to have liquor, it has to have gambling and gaming, and it has to have prostitution. And so what downstairs would have been uh, our first floor was our normal bar where people off the street could come in and have a drink, enjoy spirits. And then this floor that you see now was all gambling, gaming. And upstairs we had a hotel and also seamstresses uh -huh. that would sew your pants back on after you lost all your money. <laughs> Pioneer Square, the, the Great Seattle Fire, the, great Seattle Seattle Fire. the dark history of the city yeah. in this area and you bartended downstairs for the very first time. Any interesting stories about apparitions, ghosts? Absolutely. Uh, there's always tons of things that happen down there. Uh, with all of our history here in the restaurant, there are a lot of people that have died throughout the years, ones that we know about, and I'm sure ones we don't. And we mentioned the young boys who died back in the 1930s. Yeah, so it was a brother and sister. Um, our kitchen caught on fire and they were playing in our underground and all of the smoke billowed into the underground and they ended up dying from smoke inhalation. They got lost and couldn't get out. But I find that things that happen downstairs tend to be very playful. So I think it's them. Uh, what happened to you well, specifically? So I had been making up my ghost story for an entire weekend um, because that's just kind of what we tell people to do here. Make it up until it happens to you. I lasted maybe three days. Um, I'd just gotten finished telling my fake ghost story and the couple asked for one more drink. So I'm making them their martini and I feel something hit me in the face. It was kind of wet, kind of cold and it lingered there for a while. And I was sure it was my friend that was also sitting at the bar that was messing with me. So I started looking for that thing and I couldn't find it so I confronted him. I'm like, Have did you throw something at me? He's like, I have no idea what you're talking about. And the couple is like, were you talking about when you were making our martini? He said, yes, absolutely. And he said, we were watching you the whole time. You flinched out of nowhere. Nothing hit you. The creepy part of that story is about 12 years ago, uh, a film crew was here doing a special on merchants and the talent of that film crew flinched out of nowhere and he described exactly the same feeling that I'd felt 12 years apart. We were standing in exactly the same position. Um, and I can't help but to think that it was the same thing. We and, felt the same. You thing. have no earthly explanation for what happened to you in that film. Crew. Absolutely not. So if you want a good ghost story, go down to the first floor. Go down on the first floor. Come see me on Thursdays. Michael Harris, thanks for talking with yes, us. No problem. Thank at you. The Merchant's Cafe. Spooky place. Still searching for ways to enjoy a spine-tingling scare? Stick around. Some suggestions as City Stream continues. As Halloween nears, our fascination with fear has become a growing business. As Ian DeVere reports, hauntings and paranormal encounters have people lining up to explore the unknown. When you think of touring a city like Seattle, what comes to mind? You have the food tours. Save Seattle! Save Seattle! 
architecture tours, the underground tours, and you can always ride the ducks. You can pretty much get some insight into all the corners of this town. But there is a different type of tour growing in Seattle for those who are interested in the darker corners. I like scary stuff and so it was kind of interesting. People are just looking for something different. Tourism has changed a lot in the last maybe 20 years and there's this idea of the experience actually being a product. And it has happened on some of our tours, people do have experiences. We want to provide entertainment. A couple can go out to a movie and spend 40, 50 bucks, or they can spend not that much, come to a tour and have a personal one-in-one -one experience that they'll remember from, for years down the road. I like to see their jaws drop. You know, I like to see them go, you know. Let's face it, ghosts are trending nowadays. They are definitely trending nowadays. And in Seattle, it's a trend that has developed into four different tours. Private Eye on Seattle, the Market Ghost Tour, and two in Pioneer Square, Spooked in Seattle, and the original ghost tours of Pioneer Square, which if you ask owner Anthony McDonald, is really... It's really a play on words. They, they, they get all down and say, oh, you're not the original, you're not the original. Well, come on, man. <laughs> I'm not the first. The first ghost tour to start in the city is Private Eye on Seattle's Haunted Happenings. Would you all uh, mind raising your hands, the ones that aren't believers, so I can tell who you are? So it's always a male. Males. <laughs> Every tour owner has their own business plan, I'm assuming. If you rotate this, you might see other things as well, and different ways of doing things. So any questions before we head out? I think we each have uh, an element that helps us each stand out a little bit more. You guys ready to begin? Yeah. You guys ready to begin? Yeah. Follow me. My tour, um, we ride around in a vehicle. Uh, we cover a large area of the city and we visit various haunted locations. Not only do you hear the history behind the place, but what's currently going on as far as ghostly things are concerned and what's happened in the past. And for many of these tours, researching the past is an essential part of each location's story. And this ramp we just went down is the original horse and cattle ramp for Pike Place Market. We've done everything from paranormal research to archival research, looked at fire insurance maps. Many people are not really aware of the true history of this market. All sorts of mayhem and craziness has happened because he woke up halfway through her robbing him. And to show her his displeasure, he grabbed a pair of scissors and then stabbed her to death. We really want you to walk away learning something new about the city that you never knew. So welcome to Merchant's Cafe, you guys. This is Seattle's oldest restaurant. Because you find that the scariest stories are the real ones. And right when I looked over here, right about where you're sitting, I saw this little dark figure standing right here. Seattle wasn't always pretty. We've had a lot of interesting things happen here. I find that Seattle can easily match up to some of the most haunted cities out there. And with so many haunted places, business must be good. Yes, it is at this point, you know, because, you know, the popularity of ghosts right now. We're gonna go around the corner over here, we're gonna find out about a most peculiar ghost. I make a few dollars each week and I have fun. It's competitive. The workers down here have heard an unidentified male's voice. You always have to look to the future and think, well, what can I do differently that will set you apart from everybody else? Now, I've actually had the opportunity to investigate the underground. We share evidence collected on our investigations from video clips to audio clips. If you listen carefully, you will hear the response, Edward. Can you tell us your name? spooked in Seattle, they, these guys are ghost hunters and they have the ghost hunting equipment and all that. Uh, I don't do it that way. All, all ghost tours are controversial. And the original ghost tours of Pioneer Square is no exception. My tour, uh, it, 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 it is a, it's a blend of uh, fact and fiction. A throwback to the roots of ghost tours when details were, shall we say, embellished. I try to shock people. When the road catches, she's doing about 80, 90 miles an hour and it rips her head off. It's a different tour, you know? You know, my tour is, uh, come on, man, have some fun, man. Come on, man. 
you're going to be entertained. Who's a good storyteller? I think I'd rather not fact check. <laughs> it was good. But some people may be looking for more than just a story. My daughter and I are both just fascinated by ghosts and paranormal and... Always watching anything that has to do with paranormal investigations. It's all interesting. And for those who are brave enough to try it... Is there anybody in the, in the bunks? We'll take people on a ghost hunt. We take them to the haunted hot spots and then we'll give them some of the basics in ghost hunting. And then after that, we turn out the lights and they get to do a real ghost hunt. We also go into the old Butterworth Mortuary, which is atop of uh, the Kells Irish Brew Pub. And that's a very, very, very haunted establishment. I saw my very first ghost ever in that building. You can't, we can't guarantee that type of experience every time you go into the mortuary, but we've had some very interesting happenings in there. I would say I was skeptical, but if there's a place that's haunted, I would say that's probably the most likely place I've ever been. So whether you are looking for a paranormal experience, some interesting history, or just a good old scary story, the ghost tours are open all year round. But just remember, when you're doing a ghost tour, you never know what's going to happen. Since this story first aired, the original Ghost Tours of Pioneer Square has gone out of business, and the Market Ghost Tour now goes by the name Market Ghost Stories. The other two businesses remain unchanged, ready to show you Seattle's dark side. We'll be right back. And that wraps up the special Halloween edition of City Stream from Historic Pioneer Square. Remember, if you'd like to take that frightening tour of the Georgetown Morgue, it's open from now until November 3rd on certain dates. To find out about those exact dates, go to seattlehaunts.com and click Georgetown Morgue. I'm Dennis Bounds. Thanks for watching. To learn more about City Stream and the Seattle Channel, find us on Facebook and Twitter. You can also watch us on our Comcast HD channel 321 and on Wave Cable channel 721.